here with Jennifer Arnold from Canine Assistance, and today we're going to talk about positive reinforcement. Jennifer, I know you are very much a proponent of positive reinforcement training methods. Can you tell me why? I think that anything other than positive reinforcement is cruel, quite frankly. Um, I've seen, you know, abuse in the name of training. It's unnecessary and it's morally repugnant. Uh, and I'm surprised that as a society, we allow that c to continue to happen. It works. We can teach dogs to do the laundry using a little tiny bit of treat. Why in the world would you ever need to do anything else? And, and you know, people say, well, we work with very kind-hearted dogs. Well, we do, but the last dog I'm going to try to bully around is a dog that might be, you know, reactive. So there's never a reason to use that. And seeing it is sickening. It's just, it's time we are better than that. We as a society, I think, are better than that. And we need to stand up and say, we're not going to take it anymore. I, I think what people don't understand is that there is a battle going on in the dog training world at the moment. Those who follow modern day behavioral science, positive reinforcement, right. and those who continue to use outdated, punitive, traditional methods to teach dogs to do things. Right. And the regular argument I get is that, oh yeah, positive reinforcement is fine to use with the easy dogs and the puppies, and but with the red zone dogs, with aggressive dogs or yes. dogs with high anxiety, <clears throat> no, you've got to have a heavy hand. And I'm saying, no, you don't. In fact, positive reinforcement is a much safer method to use with those aggressive dogs and a much more successful method well you know to it's, use. it's the only it's the only method to use with those red zone dogs i mean it it is so dangerous to go after those dogs and and be aggressive and it, it makes them a great danger to society uh, they are a danger to you and quite frankly when is it ever fair to have a battle between a dog with the mental age of, you know, a toddler and a human being. Fights between people and dogs don't make sense. It's called bullying and it's intolerable. And you know, I hear all the time, like you do, that you have to, you have to be tougher than the tough dogs, that if a dog growls, you show them who's boss. You know what I do if a dog growls at me? I apologize and thank them. Thanks for letting me know that you were feeling that uncomfortable. I, I appreciate your not having to bite me. And you know, I'm sorry that I made you feel uncomfortable. I am a grown up human being who can change my behavior to make a dog feel more comfortable. What amazes me is that as a society, it's almost like we've become desensitized to the fact of like seeing in the media, for example, right. people being very heavy handed with dogs and accepting that. Other people accepting that saying that's OK because that dog is a tough dog and that dog needs a heavy hand. And what I'm saying is, no, actually, the dog needs exactly the opposite. But also you're showing people that are going to use these techniques on their dogs at home, a bite's gonna result, and whose fault is it gonna be? Not the dog's fault. But the dog's gonna die for it. Exactly. Right. But when people, those people who still use outdated, punitive techniques to train dogs, still validate their use and celebrate their use. Because I think as a society, we love the battle. We love the oh, fight. I, Especially if there's an aggressive dog coming at you and you dominate that aggressive dog into submission. Wow, aren't you amazing? What people don't realize is that not only is the dog incredibly stressed right. with what you're doing to it, but you're making the behavior worse. Right. I mean, dogs who are aggressive, I dare say, virtually all the time, that aggression is based in fear. So making them more fearful is idiotic and it's, it's cruel. And there are people, you know, who are still on television who should be arrested. I mean, I think they are guilty of animal abuse and we should have them arrested, period. But 
And I agree with you, but here's the thing. They're not. People who use dominance training techniques are not because it's validated to use on dogs. Doesn't matter the fact that dogs have that intelligence, that ability to problem solve, to have thought presses, to understand punishment as a two-year-old child. Science has shown us. Right. Now there's no more argument about it. So if you're using that parallel, is it then okay to put a shock collar or a choke collar or a prong collar or severely hit, kick or slap, poke, nudge or helicopter, swing around or scruff a two-year-old child? Well, I mean, I hope not. I'm very fearful of what started, you know, as we were going in the right direction when people were starting to maybe click or train more and then all of a sudden, you know, we had this whole dominance idea take hold that's, you know, since been proven malarkey. Um, but, but we are getting meaner as a society. And we know that in society things go from animals to women, I mean to children to women. I mean, it's that animals to children to women abuse cycle. And we have to stop it somewhere. I think dominance training techniques is a tragedy for our canine companions. And it's a tragedy I, for the people too. Absolutely. And also when I talk to people and they try to validate the use, it's, for example, I've had people say, oh, you can use positive reinforcement for your companion dogs, but you can't use it for dogs with real drive. Working dogs, for example, service dogs, you can't use it for <laughs> yeah. dogs with real drive, right. which makes me laugh because positive reinforcement is best utilized with right. dogs with real drive. Right. You're turning on by putting that piece of food in front of your dog's face or giving that do dog a toy, you're turning on that dog's drive, that, that seeking system. Exactly. Absolutely. So what is it? Why are people not more educated about this? Why you know, are we still as a nation in the dark ages? The television the has a lot. I mean, quite frankly, right. TV has has played an enormous part in this. Um, and and I think, uh, you know, we have a lot of repair work left to do. It, it is not acceptable. Um, to use those techniques, but it was televised. And people thought, if it's on TV, and you know what, I will say, it was a very clever movement, because the people who said, you've got to show those dogs who's boss, said, if you don't, you're not being fair to your dog. So people started thinking, wow, I, you know, I have to be tough enough. I have to show tough love in order to care about my dog. Well, let me just tell you, that's not true. And you can believe somebody on TV who has no credentials whatsoever, or you can believe every veterinary behaviorist on the planet. Make your decision. When I go into a home with an aggressive dog, my aim is, as soon as I walk through the front door, is to never let that dog feel like it needs to aggress ever again. Of course so, not. I mean, that's good behavioral science. Exactly. So if I go into that home and the dog bites me, bites the owner or bites anybody else after I've been there, I failed. What gets me is that dominance trainers will go into a home and fight and battle with the dog, get bitten themselves. And it's almost these bites they receive are almost like a medal of honor. Aren't I tough? because I've received all these bites. When no, they don't really. realize it's a huge failure for the dog. You've just set the dog back so many steps and made it even worse by getting it to the point where that dog feels the need to bite you. And, and it so, is a see, travesty. I knew people couldn't be trusted. I've also seen people bitten on TV and it's, it is really shocking to me uh, because that's a, a, an absolute indication uh, that the person has no business working with dogs in the first place. I mean, if you can't keep a dog as a supposed trainer from getting upset, you have no business doing that job and you should be ashamed of yourself. I think that there's a lot that society in general needs to know about training methods 
and I think we still got a long way to go, but I think we're getting there because more and more people are like you and I. There are literally thousands now of positive trainers in this country and around the world now. Part of them are part of my Victoria Still Positive Dog Training team. And they are the ones that going out, the creme de la creme going out and making dogs and people's lives better using positive reinforcement. So it's my hope that one day everybody is gonna see the light. You know, we see it now. We see that it works. We see that it works with all kinds of breeds, all kinds of issues, and that we actually don't have to put the emphasis on punishment. We can put the emphasis on teaching the dog what to do in a certain situation, rather than just spending all the energy punishing the dog. And here's the difference. Some punitive trainers will say positive re reinforcement takes a lot longer, you know. Punitive training's quick, we get a quick fix, but actually I say this, no, you don't get a quick fix, you get suppression of behavior, but the feeling is still there. So the dog's behavior can still reoccur down the line. With positive reinforcement, sometimes, especially for an anxiety issue or an aggression issue, yeah, you have to put a bit more work on in the front end, but then you get a lifetime of positively changed behavior. I mean, I've had great results with a can of squirt cheese. I mean, I think sometimes actually positive reinforcement is faster. Than, than punitive methods. I certainly, as a person who works with the, um, teaching dogs of all kinds of breeds, all ages, to do different things every day, I do see how positive reinforcement is, can be very, very fast. Um, obviously, when you're dealing with anxiety-based behaviors, right. you, you're gonna have a, to take a little longer. bit more time. Because, and that's another thing, don't say that behavior's changed. You know, how dare you, you belittle a dog's emotional experience? Right. Their brains are wired in very, very similar ways to ours. The right. emotional brain is no difference. They have the same physiological reactions to emotional states as we do. And they, they have that same memory, that same emotional memory that, that we do. Exactly. And it doesn't go away. How can it be different with a dog? How can these trainers say that a dog can be fixed like that? They have the same chemical and brain makeup that we do. when. It's perfectly acceptable the person might need to go on therapy for right. a while, a we long know, while to get better. What fascinates me is that those are the same people who believe that dogs are so smart that they lie around while we're not home thinking, how can I get the upper hand here? So when she comes home, I'm going to be out that door before she can make it out the door and then I'm going to own that house. Nobody has ever explained to me why it is a dog wants to dominate a human being. Yeah. What is all that about? I mean, first of all, it's an incorrect use of the word. But secondly, what is it that we, or those folks, think the dog wants from us? The term pecking order was kind of developed after a study of chickens in the 1920s. And then after that, scientists began to study the social relationships between animals uh, of different species. Right. And really a good dominant submissive relationship, if we're gonna use those words, let's use them. A good relationship centers around the fact that there are, yes, there are going to be more controlling animals than others. Let's put it with dogs. There are gonna be more controlling dogs than others, more dominant, let's say. But good relationships exist because submission by the less dominant do dogs is freely given. Right. Okay, it's freely given. So very rarely do you see a truly dominant dog violently turn another dog on I've its never side seen that. or back. Never seen that. Never. In order to get it submissive. You mm -hmm. haven't seen it. Mm -mm. I've seen it with you know dogs that are fearful, but not dogs that have great presence and are really you know, sort of something else, like that old fashioned macho exactly. kind of dog. They, you've seen it's it with dogs. Necessary. You've seen it with dogs that are fearful, you've seen right. it with dogs that are bullies. Right. So for example though, the dominance trainers have taken the whole idea that in order to show that you are the alpha, the dominant dog, you have to punish your dog by rolling on its side or on its back to show it who's boss. But if dogs don't do that anyway in a functional relationship... They just think you're insane. Don't they? Yeah. Or you're just not mimicking the behavior of a true confident alpha at all. You're actually mimicking the behavior of a bully. Right. You are mimicking the behavior of a bully because you are being a bully. And, and you know, what people forget is this whole concept of, of dominance really just relates to specific situations. For example, I have two male dogs. One loves toys more than anything in the whole wide world. So he will take a toy out of the other dog's mouth. The other dog doesn't mind a bit. He loves being on the bed. 
he won't allow the other dog to get on the bed. He growls when he tries. They each have their own areas. It's a much more fluid system than we oh, give it credit no, for. Oh, no, 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 though. <laughs> Punitive trainers say there's a fixed hierarchy. It is not a fixed there hierarchy. There is an alpha at the top, you're the alpha, and then other family members are below that, and then in very nice fixed slots underneath that come the animals. But that May I just happen. remind you that there are human beings who say that it is, you know, man, woman, <laughs> child, animals yeah and that that never changes i mean it, it's but hierarchy is always changing as you said it changes depending on situation and what matters to the dog to the individual same with my dogs where my little chihuahua might put more emphasis on protecting that bone right. sadie doesn't care about that right. bone but she loves that bed exactly right. the same so it's always a fluid it's like a dance and if the dance works it's going to be beautiful and because each gives to the other right. you know I mean that's the that's the the big part that I think people miss and you know the whole idea of having to show your dog that you're the boss sort of goes back in my mind to these people are are the ones who think dogs are so smart that they're gonna manipulate us um, they're the same ones who think that dogs are too stupid to realize that we control everything I mean, we, are, we control the toys, the food, the sleeping place, when they go outside, when they reproduce. We, we control their very lives. To me, there is not a dog who does not realize. I think, I mean, we could talk about this for, for a long time and the, and the debates are still going to go on, but the debate really is over. The debate, debate should be over. It should be over. Unfortunately, because of popular media, it's still not. But one day it's going to be. The debate is over. Dogs do so much in our world. It's time yeah. that the human race as a whole understand that. In America itself, we have over 78.2 million dogs. Whether you own a dog or not, you or your children are going to be around a dog. This isn't just a matter of two women sitting here saying we want to be kind to dogs. No, this is an issue of public health and safety now. Because even if you don't a dog, you or your child will be around a dog in your neighborhood, at a friend's house, at your relation's house. Right. A dog that you maybe don't know and comes up to you on the street, you're going to be around that dog. You better hope that that dog has been trained using positive reinforcement methods right. and not confrontational methods. I hope you've enjoyed the discussion that we've had today on positive reinforcement methods. It's really, really important that we now understand how the way we teach our dogs affects our dogs' lives and our lives too and makes our dogs a lot happier using positive reinforcement than confrontational methods. If you need more information, please go to positively.com, which is my website. And if you need a trainer in your area, please go to positively.com trainers. Thank you for listening. Thank you.